What's up, YouTube? Erod212 here with another video. So it's that time again. Time for the back nine. Uh, today, we're going to look at something uh, that I find very interesting. Um, it deals with society now and everything that's going on, especially with the MCU. But there's a character in DC that uh, I, I want to talk about also. But we're talking about top Asian superheroes to invest in. And a uh, big shout out to Ben from uh, CBSI for put you know putting CBSI out there and allowing me to put this video out there. Give that website a follow if you're not following it. I'll leave a link in the description. Also, a big shout out to my man Phil Lee from Vintage Comics and Toys for organizing and compiling all of this information from all of the panelists. Um, it's going to be a good one. There are some really, really good books in here. Stuff that you guys should be thinking about. I like it because it makes me think, and, and that's always the best part of this hobby is just trying to figure out what's the next big hot thing. Get into it before the book skyrockets, as we've seen with a lot of titles. So let's start this off, all right? So um, Phil goes, I have noticed the market has turned some attention to Asian superheroes as a good speculation buy after last year's blockbuster Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings. Marvel Comics, Marvel Comics also published a new Shang-Chi series last year, along with Agents of Atlas and a few future fight first and Arrow not long ago that added more source material to live action possibilities. Given the enormous opportunity for more Asian superheroes to hit the screen, we are doing it big with the best Asian superhero comics. We are given the option to all nine panelists to choose up to two picks. As always, feel free to drop your suggestions for the best Asian superheroes. I mean, that that's it in a nutshell there. There were so many new changes uh, that Marvel has been done. And um, I wanted to touch on it. Not only did Shang-Chi do very well in the theater, but it's leading to a spinoff on Disney+. Plus. They're doing, uh, if you watch The Principal Defects, they talked about it the other day. The Ten Rings is getting its own series. So let's see where that spins off and leads to, because um, that should be really interesting. But you know what? Let's take a look at the first pick and uh, see, see what we have here. All right, so Ben Stein is going to go with Contents of Champions, number one, the Ron Lim variant. It's the first appearance of White Fox. This has White Fox on the cover, still very affordable and has huge upside. White Fox checks all the boxes for a successful hero. Cool costume, very cosplayable, cool abilities, female, and best of all, a clear-cut first appearance. Uh, couldn't have said it better myself. We all know... Um, when you go to big cons, you can tell what people are following and what is the hot character by cosplay. I've seen it a bunch of times. I, I, I never forget seeing so many people dressed up in a costume. I didn't know what it was. I was talking to my son, and it was Attack on Titan. But at that point, I had not watched it. But it led me to it, and I loved it. But also when you go, some years it's been Harley. I mean, Harley was dominant for a long time. But then you're seeing Spider-Gwen. Spider-Gwen blew up. And then you saw people dressing up as Silk. Um, at the last last few cons, it's been other young female characters that have been out there, as well as some you you know young heroes. Miles Morales being one of them that just became a massive cosplay thing. Even the young kids cosplaying it. So just another thing to do: pay attention to your surroundings, pay attention to what people are cosplaying, as I do with what people are reading, because. That shows you what the future of everything is. You know, it's what everybody's into. And that's what we really want to know. All right. So let's go with pick number two. And we're going to go with Adam's pick here. And he goes with Jack, Jackie Chan's Spartan X number one cover spec. This cover is exact, exactly as what it is advertised. All in your face action. Cool cover spec for those who love retro colors and homage to Bruce Lee. That is a great Bruce Lee kick right there. You know, uh, can't get better than that. Jackie Chan, um, you know, character, the, you know, the actor himself had a long and uh, profitable career within the movie industry, you know, from crossing over from his martial arts movies to mainstream movies, you know. I mean, everybody saw Rush Hour. So now we're going to go with Jack Cornblatt, who goes with Black Cat Annual Number 1, Volume 2. It's the first full Tiger Division. Jed McKay keeps incorporating these characters into his books, and his star is clearly on the rise at Marvel. I am always interested in characters that high-profile writers love to use, and that's definitely the case here. Um, 
I'm not aware of that title, but when Jack speaks, I listen because he's always got amazing picks. So that's something that I'll probably be looking at into the future. It's probably something that's still affordable and you could scoop up right now. Those are always the best ones when you can get them like that. Now, Jason Shaw goes with a classic. He goes with X-Men number 64, the first Sunfire. Uh, there are a lot of rumors that Sunfire could be showing up in a live action. He is a super underrated X-Men villain. Can show up as a bad guy first and flip to become a good guy as he's as he did in the comics. You know what? Um, was it Sunfire was with Big Hero 6, but that's a, animated. But bring Sunfire to the movies, and that would be just the special effects alone that will be utilized on that character if it's done properly would be great. But you would have that. Uh, that villain turning, and not even a villain, an antagonist more, turning into a hero. I always like that play. Those are good specs. And besides, it's some X-Men goodness there. Yeah. Probably one of the more underrated X-Men books in that 1 through 100 one because everything else on there is getting really hot. So now um, Jason also goes with um, a book that everybody should be aware of and one that I, I feel has not hit its peak yet. And that's Amazing Fantasy number 15, the first appearance of Amadeus Cho. He says, here's a mega pick that many think will happen as his mother is already in the MCU. When Bruce Banner Hulk hangs it up, many expect Amadeus Cho to take on the mantle of the Hulk. You know what? I, I, I like that, and I'm going to tell you why. I don't think She-Hulk is the answer, but Amadeus Cho is part of the champions, Right? And part of he becomes part of the Avengers with the champions when they go over. You see that we're going to get Miles Morales. That's that's a definite, right? We're getting Kamala Khan right now. Uh, you're getting America Chavez. You're getting all of these people that were part of the champions. Uh, all we need right now is Sam Alexander, and the main core of champions is out there. And that could transcend into a movie that's geared towards the youth. If we saw how Kamala Khan was uh, being written up, it's geared toward the younger generation. This could be the plan where they take the champions and make it a Avengers-type team for a younger generation. Just something to think about. I, I find it interesting. I, I like that Amadeus Cho pick. And then let's see what we got here. All right, so Mighty Mel V goes with a good one here. He goes with Iron Fist number one. The uh, Iron Fist, number one, the one in 50 variant. It's the first Swordmaster as Iron Fist. Many Asian people in the comic community are supporting the new Iron Fist. It's possible we may get Swordmaster first over Danny Rand in the MCU. And I got to tell you that um, with everything that happened with the Iron Fist series and the negative comments that that series got a lot, I mean, I don't think anybody in the community really liked the character who played Danny Rand. Um, and Marvel bringing over all of the Disney Plus series, I could possibly see. You want to keep Iron Fist. You want to do an Iron Fist Power Man, possibly, right? So what do you do? You bring in the new Iron, Iron Fist. And big shout-out to my man, Universe X, because he's the guy who put me up on Swordmaster. Um, I did not read the um, Agents of Atlas, the uh, War of the Realms, until after he was explaining that mm -hmm. character to me. And that Swordmaster series is an underrated series. Um the books have picked up a little bit of steam now, but uh, my man UniX called it a long time ago. So shout out to him. Let's take a look now. And we're going to go with Van Demby's pick here. Uh, another good one. He goes with X-Men number 244, the first Jubilee. A recast of Jubilee would get a lot of people excited. This book went up over $100 in raw in newsstand last year. It is not at that price level now, but the upside to get back to 100 is realistic. I e easily see a new stand on that because of the time frame going over $100 again soon. Remember, that book is still affordable, and Jubilee resonates with so many people, especially like that those 90 cartoons. Everybody knows Jubilee, so you might see her in, in, in the movie. She didn't get a, a big enough role in uh, Days of Future Past, I think it was, right, that she was in. Whichever series she was in, she didn't get a big enough role, and uh, – I think that might be a character that they revisit, especially if they change up the, the X-Men lineup. And now let's see. Because uh, Peter Renner, who I got the opportunity to meet, and it uh, was nice, really, really nice meeting Peter Renner. Both recognized each other as we were walking along at King Kong. 
And if you're not following Renovision and his channel and, and watching the spec picks this man puts out, you are missing something. So definitely check out his channel. But he goes with a classic, goes with Amazing Spider-Man before the first Silk. She has an Amazon show coming still, right? So now is the time to hold and wait for more news. She is now on her fourth volume in comics that still get later prints after release. Um, Silk is coming. I, I, I just don't think that uh, you cannot touch on Cindy Moon. They might hold off a little bit on it. But if anybody knows the story, Cindy Moon actually got bitten by the same radioactive spider that Peter Parker did. And she was just being held captive. So that was a great twist to it. Um... I like the character a lot. There are some amazing covers to the Sydney Moon, and the spec is huge. And that one in ten Humberto Ramos uh, is another book that you might want to look at for um, Amazing Spider-Man number four because that book really has uh, taken off. It's it's a good one to own. And now let's see, because uh, Peter Renner also goes with uh, another book I really like, uh, Marvel Premiere number nineteen, First Colleen Wing. I'll take Marvel Premier number 19, first Colleen Wing, out of all the Netflix characters. She's one of the ones that I am hopeful, I am hopeful they will be bringing back because she, because she was one of my favorites. She was well cast, and I would still love for them to do a Daughters of the Dragon series with her and Netflix, Misty Knight. Um, and, and that's exactly my sentiments right there. I thought Misty Knight and um, Colleen Wing were the two best things out of that Iron Fist series especially like the, the martial arts sequence when she was fighting, when Colleen was fighting. That was the best part about that series. But her and that uh, Misty Knight interaction, and it was kind of like true to the to the books, especially like the bionic arm and all of that stuff for Misty Knight. Just good stuff to get. Um, you know, that Marvel Team Up 1 is, is another book. If you're looking at, you know, like that first Misty Knight, just another good book to take a look at uh, on a side note. Now, Chris Nelms goes with Batman 567, the first Cassandra Kane. People are throwing good money into the first appearance of Cassandra Kane. We saw her as a kid in the Harley movies, so one has to think there are more plans with her, especially now that the Batman universe has begun in films. Um, I, I, I think that the DC universe has taken steps in the right direction with what they did with Peacemaker and what happened with uh, The Batman. So hopefully they go in a route uh, uh, similar to what they've been doing and stay consistent with that. And don't try and just throw it all in at once, but build up those characters. This is a character that could definitely build up nice and slow and uh, give everybody a, a, a character that deserves to be introduced into the MCU. Um, and now Phil, my man Phil goes with uh, Special Marvel Edition number 15. This is the book to get if you're going to get one uh it got pricey but it dipped a little bit and is affordable um i i personally own a couple of copies of this i believe in this character and that's uh first shang chi all roads go back to shang chi if he is to be the one to introduce many asian marvel superheroes his keys naturally dipped after the movie release so now is the time to grab them and hold on to them before the next spike a second movie has been confirmed and see and that that's what i'm talking about now Shang-Chi was part of the Avengers at one point. He's been part of a few teams. So why not? Why wouldn't you take that character? He could tie in and bring in. He's the, he's the segue to lead into all of these other characters one way or another. It could be an Asian superhero team. It could be anything. Slowly introduce characters. I would love to see that Iron Fist introducing, uh, I mean, excuse me, Shang-Chi introducing Iron Fist, but I don't think we'll ever see that. So, um, you know, that was the pitch from the panel. Now, um, I was torn, and I'll tell you why. One of my favorite DC characters is Damon Wayne. And Damon Wayne and this book right here, uh, mm -hmm. if you're not aware, Damon Wayne is part Asian because he's Talia Agul, son of Talia Agul, who is Asian Arabic. Um, so he, by far, is probably one of my all-time favorite characters. So that's the pick. As I'll take as my second pick, all right? And I, I'm going to show you why because the, my next pick is a pick that I really like a lot and I think has a lot of upswing to it. And I'm going to go with War of the Realms, New Agents of Atlas number two, the one in 25 variant. And this is the first appearance of Swordmaster. This is the first appearance of Lin Lee, the Swordmaster. This is a character that has garnered some attention from the comic community. He is currently the new Iron Fist. And with the failure of the Netflix series, 
that could be a possibility that Marvel will utilize this version of Iron Fist in the MCU. Um, just my opinion, but I, I feel strong about it. And usually when I feel strong, I'm, I'm pretty accurate. I think that that's the way they're going to go. He's gotten, you know, Marvel has taken a character who started out um, basically as an online comic over in uh, in Europe, brought him over here. Giving him the sword, brings him in New Agents of Atlas, gives him the Swordmaster series, which has now taken off and, and done very well, and now makes him Iron Fist. It seems they're building this, this character up for something. We all know that the comics tie into the movies, the movies tie into the comics. So it might be the time to pick up some Swordmasters. That one in 25 is a great book to pick up. I like it. I do not own it, but I will be hunting for that. So th there's one on me. So those are the picks. But, uh, Leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think. What what characters you guys are speculating on? Did I miss anything? Um, probably did, but uh, absolutely. Let me know and um, take a look at these videos because there's some good content on these. Check out what I picked up at King Kong and the whole show floor because that was just a great show at King Kong Two, King Kong Three, soon to come, and also uh, Three Men in the Basement having this swap coming up. That's the next big event in the comic community. So if you're anywhere near Connecticut, head up there and check out the swap because there's going to be some good vendors there. And it's just a great time. It'll be my first time going up there. And I can't wait. Till my next video, peace.